Good morning. Welcome to the forecast discussion for Friday, October 6, 2023. It's the end of the week. And once you know it, after a full week of beautiful weather conditions, we end the week with a lot of fog, a lot of cloud cover, developing showers, and more rainfall on the way just in time for the start of the weekend. So let's dive into what is evolving with this whole pattern in our premium public video discussion. So right now we have this southeasterly wind. It's starting to develop. It's pretty light, around five miles per hour or so. Many locations just have light and variable winds, in fact, especially as you move further into the interior. We have a lot of moisture in the atmosphere, so that's leading to some areas of low clouds and fog, and some of that fog is pretty dense, reducing visibility below a mile, especially in portions of central and southern New Jersey and parts of Long Island. This fog will slowly give way to overcast cloud cover throughout the region and the development of a few showers here and there. So let's step back and to take a look at what's happening with this whole pattern that is evolving. And we'll do that with the upper level winds here. When we take a look at the upper level winds, one of the key indicators is a nice trough here right around the Aleutian Islands into portions of the Gulf of Alaska, the western portions of the Gulf of Alaska. That sets up the building of a ridge right around the Rockies and the Pacific Northwest. And so that teleconnects into a trough in the polar jet stream that is starting to dig towards our way. And this trough will transport a nice polar air mass that is right about here. In fact, when we take a look at the 850 millibar temperatures, we'll zoom in on that, you can see that polar air mass very nicely starting to dive its way into the northern plains and heading towards our neck of the woods by the time we get to tomorrow night and especially on Sunday. You'll definitely notice a difference. So we're certainly seeing an evolution here in our pattern of starting to take shape. So when we take a look at our upper level winds, we also see the subtropical jet stream. This feature is setting up a nice upper level low to north of the Bahamas. At the same time, we have a tropical system, you can kind of make it out right about here, that is called Tropical Storm Felipe. Now, this morning, Felipe doesn't exactly look very healthy. Let's take a look at the satellite picture. Now, what's happening is that that upper level low to the west is setting up an extra tropical storm, cold core storm, and that is entraining and shearing apart Felipe. So, here is what's left of the low level center. I would not be surprised if this gets transitioned over to an, a post tropical or extra tropical uh, storm from the NHC. I mean, this is really, really getting ripped apart and a little bit faster than what was expected in the model guidance and uh, in, in the NHC forecast. As you can see right here, it was expected to remain at least tropical until about tonight and then transition to extra tropical as it lifts up towards the Gulf of Maine. But let's take a step back and take a look at what is happening here. And we'll do that first with the infrared satellite picture. So here's our series of cold fronts that are marching our way through in our polar jet stream. Here is our short wave in the subtropical jet stream. Notice it's not really moving all that much. And then here is what's left of Felipe. And this is all starting to get entrained. So the tropical nature of Felipe really isn't going to add all that much to the storm development aside from some deep tropical moisture. But in terms of the storm development and, and whether or not it enhances the winds, not really, not in this case. By the time it gets anywhere near the Gulf of Maine, this is going to be 100% extra tropical. Uh, so a totally different storm structure. When we take a look at the water vapor satellite picture, this really comes into light. Now, take a look at what's happening here. We have our upper level low that is kind of stuck here because the pattern's kind of blocked up in the central Atlantic in training Felipe. And it's starting to set up this extra tropical storm. So you basically have this ocean storm in the Western Atlantic. Meanwhile, because everything's kind of slowed to crawl out here, the polar jet stream has enough time to capture this storm. So this trough marches its way in with a cold front, a series of cold fronts. You can see the series of short waves here with strong lifting, sinking air. Lifting a little bit stronger, sinking air more strong lifting and here comes that polar air that we were taking a look at meanwhile we have an upper level low that is starting to develop to the north of the great lakes this will head towards the st lawrence river valley this whole structure here will basically tilt into a negative tilt capture this 
and pulled it back towards the Gulf of Maine. So basically you get this coastal storm that lifts northward and then you get a full phase by the time it gets into Canada. How does this impact us? Well, it slows down the cold front a bit. So for today, we'll have these scattered showers starting to pop up once the fog starts to give way. Then after that, you'll get more widespread showers starting to develop towards this evening. Some of those showers will be heavy. And then as the cold front is marching through and you're dealing with all this low level convergence setting up with, between this storm and this trough and the upper level divergence as well, you end up with strong lifting right along the frontal boundary with enhanced frontogenesis or thermal gradient. And that sets up a line of moderate to heavy rainfall that I think is primarily going to be focused over northeastern new york and new england but also dipping down into connecticut and long island is going to be marching its way through and that's going to open up the potential for some areas of heavier rainfall and rainfall amounts possibly pushing over an inch in some locations especially where they don't need it in connecticut and southeastern new york so we're going to have to watch that very carefully i think if we were dealing with a situation where we didn't have all that rainfall the previous weekend then this wouldn't be as too much of a concern but considering the super saturated nature of the groundwater and the, and the ground itself and and the the rivers any additional rainfall could open up the potential for some localized flash flooding so we'll have to watch out for that as this marches its way through when we take a look at the mild guidance of all this well we'll start off with 500 millibar pva and you can see for today, that evolution starting to take shape. Here's the polar jet stream. Here's the uh, polar trough. Here is the trough and the subtropical jet stream. Tonight, it starts to interact. Notice the tilt, negative tilt here, the slight negative tilt here, the stronger lifting starting to develop. And by tomorrow morning, it really starts to organize itself. Here is the uh, short wave in the subtropical jet stream. And by tomorrow, you can really see tomorrow afternoon, evening, that line of heavier rainfall getting ready to march its way through. And then there is the uh, shortwave in the subtropical jet stream, certainly entrained in all this. And then it becomes phased into one storm with the upper level low over the St. Lawrence River Valley becoming the dominant upper level low. And then we'll talk about that in terms of the rest of the week and how that's going to impact us in just a second. But I just want to, again, force in here, show the evolution of the lifting here uh, tomorrow morning to tomorrow afternoon with that band of heavy rainfall is going to be marching its way through, very clearly showing the lifting. You see that here at 850 millibars as well. And you can see that interaction with the uh, shortwave and the subtropical jet stream all starting to phase into one storm. And of course, the cold air transport. So for today, we are basically stagnant with the warm air transport. And then here comes the cold air transport really marching its way through. And then on Sunday, it just really plummets through. And we kind have some locations with 850 millibar temperatures around zero degrees Celsius. So that's some chilly air. So definitely some uh, much chillier conditions are on the way. In terms of the rainfall, when we take a look at 700 millibar relative humidity, you can see a very sharp cutoff here. You can see the strong dry air transport here setting up on Saturday evening. So I think this marches its way through the area. And then once it gets through, you're done. So there's nothing really lingering behind it. So that's how I'm kind of seeing this whole evolution. You can see that very nicely here on the European guidance here, right? there the showers move through again there's your heavier rainfall setting up around southeastern new york connecticut and then marching its way towards the rest of new england meanwhile new jersey and pennsylvania pretty much just deals with scattered showers so this isn't as a significant of a rainfall event um for the region more scattered showers get more of a occasional heavy downpour here and there the real focus is going to be basically new york city up through the hudson river valley on east and we can see that very nicely here, marching its way through on Saturday and then clearing out. And then behind that, we pretty much dry out, but I'm gonna keep an eye on this. You know, you got a lot of cold air aloft in the highest elevations. I would not be surprised if a few snowflakes mix in with some of this showers as the upper level low sets up. And that takes us back to here where that upper level low basically sits and spins to the north of us. And that's gonna keep us cool with plenty of chilly air 
a nice polar air mass in place. But then by the end of the week, we get another short wave approaching from the subtropical jet stream. We'll see how that all evolves. Some guidance has the interaction between the polar jet stream and subtropical jet stream later, so that the colder air relative for this time of year remains in place longer. Some locate some mild guidance, like the one I'm showing here, show uh, in a faster phase. So you end up with a storm, a faster and uh, faster solution and a warmer solution uh, in this evolution. So we'll see how this all plays out. But get used to these questions because we're going to be dealing with them a lot as we move through the rest of fall and into the winter months. How do these short waves interact? When do they interact? Where do they interact? And what does that mean for weather for us? For us, for right now, for this time of year, it means rain regardless but it could mean a difference in terms of expected high temperatures. So with that, let's dive into this forecast for today. And with that, we have low clouds and fog that will slowly give way to low clouds and scattered showers with high temperatures ranging from the upper 60s to lower 70s over the northern interior and along the coast, mid to upper 70s in the Delaware River Valley. That might be tempered a bit if this fog really tries to hang around some of the locations around the Delaware River Valley. For tonight into tomorrow, we'll have showers becoming more widespread. Some of those showers will become heavy at times, especially around southeastern New York and Connecticut. Look for low temperatures ranging from the mid to upper 50s over the northern interior, lower to mid 60s along the coast. Tomorrow, the cold front slowly moves through with a periods of showers capable of heavy downpours. And again, we are going to be watching for that heavy band of rain that's going to set up somewhere around southeastern New York through uh, the Hudson River Valley and into northeastern New York. That will slowly march its way to the east through new england and through connecticut and long island with some heavier downpours look for high temperatures to range from the lower to mid 60s over the northern interior mid to upper 60s along the coast and upper 60s to lower 70s in the delaware river valley now by the time we get to sunday that low pressure system starts to pull away and what that will lead to is clearing skies throughout the region but a few pesky showers over the northern interior again we might have to watch out for a few snowflakes in the highest elevations much cooler weather conditions and also breezy on sunday with low temperatures ranging from the lower to mid 40s over the northern interior upper 40s to lower 50s along the coast high temperatures will range from the mid to upper 50s over the northern interior and upper 50s to lower 60s along the coast. On Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, we'll continue to have that upper level low sitting to the north of us, and that's going to set up the potential for scattered cloud cover and occasional isolated shower here and there. These showers will be weak. The, the primary theme through much of next week will be cool, kind of chilly, variable cloud cover, and a few isolated showers here and there. That's pretty much the theme. Now, as far as temperatures, look for temperatures through the period to range from the upper 30s to lower 40s over the northern interior, lower to mid 40s along the coast, and mid to upper 40s in your urban areas for lows. High temperatures through the period range from the lower to mid 50s over the northern interior, and upper 50s to lower 60s along the coast, and lower to mid 60s in the Delaware River Valley. Now on Friday, we'll have an area of low pressure that starts to develop, and we're going to see the development of scattered showers throughout the region as this low pressure system organizes in the Tennessee River Valley with a warm front that's going to be approaching the region. This isn't a washout, but certainly a bit unsettled, with low temperatures ranging from the upper 40s to lower 50s over the northern interior, lower to mid 50s along the coast, mid to upper 50s in your urban areas, and high temperatures ranging from the mid to upper 60s over the northern interior and along the coast, lower to mid 70s in the Delaware River Valley. That's your forecast discussion for today. I hope you have a wonderful weekend, and as always, stay safe out there.